And so what I want to do is take a little bit of time to introduce you to facial analysis technology. Facial analysis technology is about taking an image, taking a video, and seeing if you can find some kind of pattern around the human face. And so there are many different kinds of tasks that are involved when we say facial analysis technology. The most basic task is asking this question. Is there a face? You can't do anything else if you can't find the face. So this is what's known as face detection. Have you seen face detection out there where? <coughs> Maybe on a Facebook, on your where? Snapchat. Snapchat, yes. And so once you do face detection and you know there's a face, other kinds of tasks you can do are called uh, attribute classification. So what kind of face? I have a photo of Angela Bassett, Wakanda forever, where we're asking what kind of face does she have, where now you've detected a face and you want to maybe guess the age of a person, or maybe you want to guess the gender. You might even try to guess the ethnicity. And some companies try to guess the emotion of a face. Now, how many people can put on a fake smile? Any fake smiles? Fake smile? OK, we got a fake smile. So we know that what's on a face doesn't necessarily tell you what's in somebody's head. So just because a company claims they can guess something about you doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Okay, and now for the one that makes the headlines, facial recognition. So when we're talking about facial recognition, not only do we want to detect the face or know what kind of face it is, but we want to know whose face it is. And this comes in two flavors. One is verification. So this is one-to-one -one matching. Think about unlocking your phone, right? One-to-one. -one. Verifying you are who you say you are, this is your phone. The other, which is used by police, is identification, one to many. I'm trying to find a person of interest. So in this particular workshop, we're gonna focus on the first one, which is facial verification. So what are the basic steps for this to work? The first thing is we gotta get a photo of your face. Maybe you take a photo, maybe we get it from the internet, <coughs> but first you capture a face. Once you capture a face, the machine then makes a unique face print. You got a fingerprint, right? It's unique to you. You can also get a face print, which is unique to an individual. So now that you have this face print, you're gonna compare one face print with another to try to make a determination. And so once you compare two face prints, we call this face matching, and you can actually get a match score. All right, so just as an overview, facial analysis, is it just one thing? No. It is many things. So you have face detection. What is a face, right? You have the kind of, is there a face? And then you have face classification. What kind of face? And then we just talked about different kinds of facial recognition. One-to-one, -one, unlock your phone, verify. So we'll be doing some matching today. And then the much wider identification, one-to-many searching. Where are some places you've seen facial recognition or facial analysis used? Anywhere? Do you know it's being used in some schools, right? People are saying we can take attendance with your face. People are saying we can tell if you're paying attention with our cameras. And people are also using this for surveillance as well, which is why you have schools and um, communities organizing to resist putting this kind of technology into schools. So where you have cameras, they can become alive when you add facial analysis to it. Another place we have facial analysis technology being used is at concerts, right? And so this can become your entry pass. But people are also resisting this. And in fact, you now have 40 concert venues that have said we're not going to use facial analysis technology thanks to work from Fight for the Future. You also have facial analysis and recognition technology being used for housing to get into your house. Scan your face, they say, but again, not everybody wants this, and you have tenants in Brooklyn who have been protesting against this, and there's even a bill, the No um, Biometric Barriers to Housing Act, that's saying we shouldn't have facial analysis be the barrier to get into your own home. And then finally, we are using facial analysis technology with law enforcement. And so this can be used to find a missing person, what we talked about with identification, generate a suspect list, so all of those match scores, do you look close to this person, maybe you get pulled in, and then wide surveillance. But just because it's being used, as Sasha brought up, we know these systems can have some issues, 
And some of the issues that have been shown is they don't necessarily work the same across different groups of people. So your skin color can influence it, your gender, your age, your race and ethnicity. And you can also confuse these systems, which is some of what we will be trying to explore a little bit later in the workshop. So here is an example, and this is the example that actually got me started with this sort of research, where the question of is there face at all Face detection, the answer came back no. So when I was a student, a master's student, and I was working on an art project, I saw that the art project I wanted to create was gonna detect faces. But it wouldn't detect my face until I put on a white mask. But when it came to my lighter skinned friends, it was just fine. And it was this experience that I had when I started wondering, well, how do these technologies work in the first place is it just my face or is this happening to other people? The other thing, maybe your face is identified, right? It's detected, but you can be misidentified. So that face matching that we talked about a little bit <coughs> earlier, you could be matched as the wrong person. And this has been happening in the real world. There was a Brown University senior who was studying for finals and was flagged as being a terrorist suspect in the Sri Lanka Easter bombings. She wasn't even in Sri Lanka. She was at Brown, but her family received death threats because they put her face on the news and it, it disrupted her life. And so it's not just a case of, oh, they make a mistake, we can clear it easily or it's not gonna impact somebody's life. Another person at, at 18 years old, uh, Mr. Ba, he was actually falsely arrested and has sued Apple for $1 billion based on some of the facial uh, recognition uh, misidentifications um, that have been out there. And so misidentifications are an issue. If you're not detecting faces, maybe that's good. You're evading the surveillance <coughs> state. But we have to also think that these technologies aren't just about faces. You also have <coughs> computer vision systems that try to detect bodies. So now think of a self-driving car. Right? Self-driving cars are supposed to make the roads safer. But there's actually a study that came out from Georgia Tech showing, you probably guessed it, if you have darker skin, you're less likely to be detected. So in this case, not being detected can be an issue, um, though you might not want to be detected when this kind of technology is being used for surveillance. But because their cost of inclusion and their cost of exclusion, we have to be careful about how we move forward with it. All right, now here are some other kinds of failures, right? And the technical term for this is phenotypic failure. And so when we're talking about phenotypic failure, what we really mean is the actual structure of somebody's face. And so in this example, there's a man in New Zealand who was trying to get his passport renewed. But do you see what it says there in the corner? Can anyone see that? Hard to read. I can't even read that. Wait, it said, the photo you wanted to upload does not meet our criteria because subject eyes are closed. But you can see in this situation, that's not actually the case. And then you have another situation where this man, I think, is, um, is Joan, no, Joshua Banda, right? And he was trying to get his passport for the UK. And what do we see here? Your mouth is open, even though that is not necessarily the case, right? So the, these are a few examples that we have for when facial recognition systems go wrong. Another way these systems can fail is they can be misused. So you had the New York Police Department. They were actually using celebrity look-alike photos to try to search for people, right? So if you're thinking about a fingerprint, you can't just take somebody else's fingerprint and say you're going to look like that person. You even had a case where police were cutting out somebody else's eyes, somebody else's nose, somebody else's lips, and putting it on a photo, and then running that photo through matching. So going back to the fingerprint, imagine if you had bits and pieces of a fingerprint erased, and then somebody just went in to draw it. Would, would we think that's technical and highly accurate? 
No, but this is what the New York Police Department is doing. So it's not just that these systems can have mistakes, which they do have, but you can also have people who are using it in all kinds of ways that can be uh, problematic. 